Hi, I am Uchia and this is the 16th episode of Music Theory in 5 minutes. For 15 episodes we have talked a lot about chords, harmony and everything about the pitch of the notes, but I couldn't make a series on music theory without talking about rhythm as well. So just like we did with harmony, we'll start off with this first episode with the very basics and then we'll build upon that. Let's get started. If harmony is the way we organize notes in pitches, rhythm is the way we organize the notes in time. And this is not to confuse with tempo, which is the global pace of the music. For example, a tempo of 100 beat per minute is different than a tempo of 140 beat per minute, but a rhythm, which is the grouping of several notes, can be played at any of these tempi. Now, to talk about rhythm, we'll have to define how we divide time and define the length each note can have and how we can notate that as well. So we start with a tempo that defines the speed of the music by telling us how many beats fits in one minute. So for 100 BPM, that's 100 beats per minute. That's the pace of our music. Then one of the biggest notes we can have is a whole note, which is 4 beats long. This is noted as a little circle. Then this whole note can be divided in two half notes, which are two beats long. It's noted with a little circle with a tail like this. Then if we divide this note by two again, we have a quarter note, which lasts for one beat. And this one is noted as a black note with a tail. If we divide this one by two, we have an eighth note, which lasts for a half beat and is noted as a black note with a hook. Divided by 2, we have a 16th note, which is as long as the quarter of a beat and is noted as a black note with two hooks. And then you can go on dividing the length of these notes again and again, uh, dividing the length by 2 every time and adding a hook every time. So we have a whole note, which is the length of two half notes, each of them is the length of two quarter notes, etc. etc. And you also have equivalent symbols to write silences as well for each of these lengths. Here you can see them on this screen. We can then begin to combine all these notes and silences to create some rhythms. For example, if we take some of them at random, we could get this rhythm. Here the pulse given by our BPM would land there on these dots and our rhythm will then sound like this. To have more variety, we can then add modifiers to these notes to modify the length a bit. First, you can link them, so the length add up. So a half note, which is two beats, linked to a quarter note, which is one beat, would make a note that would last for three beats. Or a quarter note linked to a sixteenth note would make a note that would last for one beat plus the quarter of a beat. Secondly, you can also add a dot to a note. Basically, it extends the length of these notes by half of its original value. For example, a half note is two beats, but a dotted half note would be a half note plus the half of a half note. So it's the same length that a half note plus a quarter note, three beats. A dotted eighth note would be the same than an eighth note plus a sixteenth note, which would be three quarter of a beat in total. And then a third way we can modify the time value of a note are tuplets. If we can divide the length of a note by 2 or by 4, tuplets are here to divide them by other odd numbers. They are noted at the group of notes linked by a bracket with a number above that indicates the ratio of the division. They are different kind of tuplets. They are triplets that divide length into three equal parts. Triplets on quarter notes, for example, are three notes that will take the same length than two quarter notes and triplets on eighth note or three note that will take the same length that two eighth note. Here is how these triplets sound like. Then there are quintuplets that are a way to divide the length in five equal parts, sextuplets divided by six and septuplet divided by seven. For example, quintuplet, sextuplet and septuplet on eighth notes are respectively five, six and seven notes that will take the same length than four eighth notes. 
A quick note aside, most doors allow you to make triplets by editing the time grid, but that doesn't always allow you to make other tuplets. So I'll show you how I do them in my door of choice, Ableton Live, and hopefully it would work in a similar way in other doors. So for quintuplets, you put six notes, the five notes of the quintuplet plus one note, then select them all and squash them so the five first notes fill the right amount of beats. And then you have a perfect quintuplet that you can then duplicate as you want. For sextuplet, you can use the triplet grid as six is a multiple of three. And for the septuplet, you put eight notes, so the septuplet plus one note, then select them and squash them like before. So you can see the time of your song as divided in beats, which are all divided by two, then subdivided by two, as much as you want really. And that forms a grid that is really well represented by your piano roll of a door. And then you have these modifiers to modify the length of each note to create notes with length that doesn't really fit with this grid, so you can make any rhythm you want. And so we now have all these notes to choose from to fill that grid and we can pretty much create any rhythm pattern we like, really. Would there be a drum pattern, a melody, a harmonic rhythm, which is the rhythm with which your chords will change? And these rhythm patterns don't have to be all of the same length. They can be three bits long, four bits, five bits long, and the length of these rhythms will be determined by the type of bar we put this rhythm in, or rather by the time signature of this bar. Bars are like containers to put your notes in, and the length that will give us the core structure of our rhythm is given us by their time signature. The time signature is the numbers we sometimes see at the beginning of a bar and that is presented like a fraction. These bars and time signatures will be the topic of the next video. We'll talk about how these different types of bar and time signatures can change the whole structure and feel of a song, with some general blueprints of where to put the strong beats and weak beats for each of them. In the meantime, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like and leave a comment. Uh, you can share it to your friend if you think that can be useful for them, or subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time.